Okay, here's the next victim. I've been saving this one because I wanted to make sure I didn't screw it up when I tried to clean it up. Now that I wipe the dirt off it, it's really not as bad as I remember. Decals have a couple issues along the front edge. And you can see where there's a bare spot right there, where it's just normal wear. But most of the bed isn't too bad. It's got a couple of spots. But I think I'd like to clean this up and at least recoat the bed. so that I can prevent any further wear. It's kind of dark in the back. Should be able to clean that up. The guard isn't too bad. Here, this will be a better example to see if I can show you the magic of trying to do French polish and getting it to even out right. So let's get to that spot and then we'll give it a go. Here's the next step in the prep. I peeled off all the extra pieces so nothing's sticking out. Wiped the whole thing down with Gojo. Cleaned it all up as best I could. The areas that were silvered are still silvered. The Gojo didn't seem to bother it, except in a couple places. I was scrubbing with a cotton glove. And I silvered it right there at the bottom edge while I was scrubbing it. So, don't do that. These decals are interesting that... It doesn't seem so much that the decals were melting as much as they were just flaking the color off. If you look at this one, just trying to clean it up a little bit, it's just flaky. So I didn't push it too hard because I didn't want to wreck all the color, but this area was real dark. That cleaned up pretty good. The whole back was dark. That's a lot lighter. So all the light areas are good. After doing that, I wiped it down with sewing machine oil try and clean up any of the extra residue and then I wiped it down with naphtha which is just Coleman camp stove fuel and you can see it pulls all the extra oil and impurities out and it leaves that brown haze that's just the old shellac once we put new shellac on that'll clean right up it'll melt right back down and be invisible it's interesting that this seems like it had very little shellac over the decals to begin with. You can see. Maybe you can see. If I get down low enough. Did you just see the, the outline of the decals sticking up above the surface? So now we gotta get to digging out the shellac. One other thing I wanted to show you it was interesting that the factory finish isn't all that perfect either. Look in a couple spots. You can see where the paint and the shellac actually had runs in it. So, they weren't exactly perfect right from the get-go. Okay, time for the first coat. I got some shellac out of the big can labeled shellac. Let's just dilute a little bit. Just got my little pad. I'll have some stuff on here. I'm just going to do a quick paint. Just to coat it. Because it has alcohol in it, you don't want to get too carried away. Because you don't want it to soak into those decals. You just want to get a coat on top. To seal it up. Before you start adding more. Nothing fancy. You could probably use a brush if you wanted to. Coat. 
here we are at the end of the first coat. You can see that that pale haziness from the shellac is all gone. It's melted right in. It's still kind of streaky and splotchy. It's nowhere near level. But right now I'm not worried about level. Right now I just want to build up. Get a couple coats on. Then we can go from there. Okay, let's keep going. I'll just keep slobbing on some more. The alcohol in there, you really only get one or two swipes before it starts to get sticky because it dries so fast. So you gotta work quick. Just keep piling it on. It's still gonna be soft. Get rid of the worst of the streaks and pile it on there. Time to get busy with the next step. Life got in the way and this had to sit for about two weeks so the finish is nice and hard now. You can't scratch it with a fingernail. It's still lumpy and bumpy. There's still spots where I can see the outline of the decals above the shellac. So there's really not a lot of shellac there yet, so I still need to add some more. I've got all my materials ready. I've got my little rubber and I cut it down to about the size of a quarter. Because once you're trying to work on the bed of the machine, you don't have a lot of space. i got my can of shellac. It's just seal coat. It's 100% wax-free shellac. Wax is good when you're a bug because the wax will rise to the top and protect your shellac, but it's not so good when you're doing refinishing work because the wax will keep the next layer from sticking. I got some alcohol in a bottle and I got some regular sewing machine oil. That's been working fine for me. I've heard tell of people using mineral oil and olive oil and all sorts of things. I guess they're really not that critical. The oil doesn't mix with the finish. It just keeps it from sticking while you're working on it. So now we can get busy start smearing it on here. Okay, trying to film this is sticky business because you got to get it just the right angle so you can see the reflection so you can keep track of what you're doing. I've got my pad here. It's basically dry. It's a little bit damp. I'm just going to dip it into the shellac so that I got some on the surface. You can see that. Just kind of smoosh it in here a little bit to get it in there. And I'm just going to start swirling it on here. And really what you're doing is it's almost like a squeegee. Every time you swirl around, the alcohol evaporates right behind where you were. So it leaves that fine deposit of shellac as the alcohol evaporates. And the alcohol melts the layer below it. So as you work along, you're turning the top layer into a slushy, sticky. And your pad is actually wearing off the high spots and filling in the low spots. And because this was sat for two weeks, I can go right over this with straight shellac and it isn't sticky yet because it's going to take a minute for that to soak in and soften the layer below it. But once it gets sticky, I'm going to have to add some alcohol. But really what you're doing is you're making these swirls and you just want to keep knocking off the high spots and the ridges that you're creating with your pad. She's starting to get sticky. So each little dab, oop, I can feel it squeaking. Each little dab is adding shellac that's going to dry almost immediately. Dry meaning getting sticky. If you let it set for a couple days, the alcohol would evaporate out, 
any oil or wax would rise to the surface. So that's not bad already. Let me see if I can move this camera around so you can see these swirls. Alright, this is the hard part, just getting a good image of these swirls. Because you're making a mess. But then if you can go back through and swirl it just to level it, the really fine swirls from the material will settle out and the rest will be okay. You don't want it to squeak because once it gets squeaky you actually leave little skid marks and then you'll have to soften it up and go back and work out that skid mark. As you can see it's, it's like honey or dry sticky. And I'm leaving fingerprints in it. Because what I just put on has dried out and it's melting into the top layer from a couple days ago. So I'll just take it and work it right back out again. That's why shellac on old furniture is nice, is because you can go back and rework it. It can be a week old or 10 years old or 100 years old, and that shellac will still melt cup rings and marks and dents you can work them right back out again just like they never were one thing you don't want to do when you're working on this is you don't want to leave a puddle because if you leave a puddle or a drop the alcohol in your mix will sink right in and it'll soak all the way through to the base layer and then you'll end up with a pothole that you gotta fill back in. That's not really what you want. You want to keep adding. You don't want to subtract. If it gets really sticky and weird you can add some straight alcohol to your pad just to soften it up a little bit. But you gotta be careful with that balance between having too much alcohol so that it's stripping and having too much shellac where it piles on and gets sticky and it won't level nice. You want it nice and thin. And the seal coat in the can is already pre-thinned to a pretty good mixture. So it works out pretty well just the way it is. I'm going to keep going over this whole machine. Get the whole base of it nice and soft and pliable. I know that I got a good layer of slush on here. And then I'll go back and start hitting it with the oil and see if I can't smooth it out a little bit. Alright, I've been going over this for a while. And I've added a bunch of shellac to it, swirled it all on here. So now I'm down to just some light, even swirl marks, some streak marks from the rag. But I've got it on here thick enough now that it's getting sticky. It's like having maple syrup on your countertop. If I keep wiping it, you can feel it's starting to squeak. So I'm going to add some oil. Oops, I'm just sticking my gloves. Just a couple drops. Put it on here. And the oil will keep the cloth from sticking. And what that does is it allows you to add some more pressure to it. And use the texture of the cloth, kind of like sandpaper. pressure and keep it moving that'll level out that sticky shellac and actually polish it down so it works out more of the swirl marks it's real fine you just keep going Stopped. 
It's actually still very sticky. But with a little bit of oil on your pad, you're actually working that right out. A little too much fingerprint. And we'll let that go for a few minutes and let it settle. Okay, I've been working that for a few minutes. You can already see I'm getting a pretty respectable finish on it. It's nice and glossy. It's still lumpy. I'm worried about it. I can go back through and do a little bit of wet sanding. I'll try and level out the high spots and then fill in the low spots more. I still got some swirl marks. I need to work up there in the front corner some more. And I need to work in the back by the base of the pillar. That's why you really need the smaller pad so you can work down around the edges. If you're doing a big big flat space it's easier. But down here where it's tight you gotta have a small pad. But yeah, we're doing pretty good already. Out here in the middle, it's kind of like a candy coating. There's a little odd swirl here and there. I need to work a little more right there. But you just keep working it. Keep smoothing it out. And it blends right down nice. It's just going to be just a work machine. That's certainly enough to protect the decals. You could use it without wearing it anymore. The body of the machine, I'm still just wiping it on there. Honestly, there's not too many people who are going to look at this real close. They're going to be looking at the bed. So that's where I spend most of my time. Keep going, see what I can do with making it a little better. Okay, it's about 15 20 minutes later. I'm actually pretty happy with this. Oops. Trying to get in here. It's looking pretty good. It's not a perfect auto body shop finish, but what are you expecting for a hundred year old machine? If I really wanted to strip the thing down and fill it and paint it and spray it and go that route. You could certainly do that. Got a flat finish, but I think for a hundred old hundred year old machine this isn't too bad. I worked out these back corners. So they're not too bad. Still a few marks right around the base, but I'm not gonna get too upset about that. She's looking pretty good. I think I may leave it just the way it is, I'm not seeing it at all. Once I get down to the end of my polishing here, there's very little shellac on the pad. It's mostly just a little bit of oil. I hope you can see if that's shiny. I was just treating it like sandpaper. So I'm just adding and burnishing and swirling it around a little bit just to smooth it out. The next step is leave it alone. Just don't touch it, don't handle it, walk away for a couple of days and let it dry. Because that oil that's mixed in with the surface is going to slow down the alcohol so it's not going to dry very fast. So it needs a couple of days for the alcohol to settle out and all the shellac to settle down. And it could be, you know, a week or two weeks before you can do anything, otherwise you're going to stick your fingerprints in it or you're going to stick a cloth on it and leave marks from the cloth. So just leave it alone and let it set.